Last year, or even maybe two years ago at this point, I decided that I wanted to own silk pajamas. However, I was a little bit hesitant to spend that much money on pajamas because I didn't even know if I was going to like them and I felt bad about buying them, wearing them to sleep in, and then not liking them and trying to return them. So I said, let me make some to see if I even like these and then we'll take it from there. But then I got curious, why are silk pajamas even considered so luxurious? Like why is that our upper echelon of pajamas? So we're gonna do a quick history lesson, long story, very short about the origins of silk and how we got here. Silk was first manufactured in Asia, specifically China, in what is estimated to be about 2700 BCE. However, silk pajamas aren't first documented until the Tang Dynasty, so about 618 CE. At that time, it was reserved for nobility and the upper class because only they could afford it. Then, during the silk trade, other people, other rich people, got exposed to the fabric and were able to buy it, and then they started making silk lounger and pajamas. So now silk is in North America and Europe and all the upper class people are wearing silk lounger pajamas garments you name it. Then eventually it hit Hollywood so then you saw the stars all wearing these silk lounge sets or being on screen in silk and in the magazines like Time and Life walking around looking glamorous in their silk pajamas, in their silk loungewear, in their silk dresses. This is especially prevalent before the war when you see a lot of golden age or golden era actresses and actors with their silk robes and their slinky bias cut dresses, this is where it came from. Now it's considered a high-end natural luxury fabric, which it is because of all that's necessary to produce it, to cut it, to wash it, and to sew it. So that is why society has lifted up silk as the top tier of pajamas. And also kind of explains why only rich people could afford it for a little bit because it ain't cheap. So that's the TDLR. Now, we're going to attempt to make these. So this is actually my second attempt. The first attempt I did film and ended up ruining my fabric because I tried a stiffener treatment. I do not recommend using gelatin and water as a fabric stiffener, no matter what people say. <laughs> and I was so discouraged that I had to take a break, but now I'm ready to come back. Let me tell you what patterns I'm using. For the top, I'll be using the True Bias Ogden Cami, which I've made a few times before, so I can't really show you me doing my mods, but I have done a full bust adjustment. I've just rotated the dart out to the bottom. And I also took an inch off the side seam of the front bodice. That's just the fit that works best for me. I could also not be at all enticed to put four darts into <laughs> silk fabric. Was not going to do that. And then for the shorts, I'll be using my own block. You all know I love my block. And I think I added an inch or half an inch of ease to the side seams just to make them pull on shorts versus uh, more fitted shorts. All right, let's try round two. I'm going to cut my fabric off camera. I'm gonna sprinkle in a few tips about how to work with silk and delicate fabrics, but let's begin. All my pieces are cut out and I'm going to start with the top. Since this is not a bias cut garment, I actually cut it on the cross grain. You can't really tell, there's a little bit more stretch than normal, but that just helps with puckering. I have also already stay stitched my necklines, so we're just ready to go. And this one is done by hand because I did it on the table because I was afraid it would stretch out even though it was cut on the cross grain. It did not. I've also already done my straps. I will be referencing this book that has excellent tips for sewing silk and lingerie, but my first tip would be if you're cutting silk charmeuse, cut it on a single layer and to make that a little bit easier, I made my pattern pieces full pieces as opposed to half. And then I just used my rotary cutter and weights and cut the whole thing out. But let's start sewing. Since I am sewing with silk, I want to use a very small needle. So I can use a 10, 70, or a 860. I would probably use this one more for a silk chiffon or just chiffon. I'm going to be using the 1070 for this one, but you want it to be microtex or as sharp as possible. You all know I love my walking foot, but I'm actually using a regular sewing foot to do this because the walking foot will leave trails on your fabric. I'm also sewing with a 2.5 stitch length. You want to be somewhere between 2 and 2.5 depending on your fabric. I tried two and I thought it was a little bit too skinny so I bumped it up to 2.5. So I've already stay stitched my necklines of all of my front and back pieces as well as my facing. 
So I am going to do French seams for this tank top. That's your first tip. And what that means is I'm going to pin it wrong sides together, so a very narrow seam, clip it, and then pin it right sides together and sew it that way. And the reason I'm doing French seams is because with a silkier fabric, it just looks nicer on the inside. If you have a serger or if you wanted to do bias binding, that's also an option. I did go to Nordstrom and look at all the fancy pajamas and see how the interiors were finished and most of them are French seams or bias binding. But you do you, whatever seam finishes you want. So I trimmed my seams as you saw and then I pressed them and so now my fabric is right sides together and I'm just going to sew along the edge a quarter of an inch. Okay this is what it looks like when it's done. It's just a really nice finish on the inside and then we look on the outside. It just looks like a regular nice seam. So now I just need to do this to the facing and base my straps in. been a minute <laughs> I think it's been like two months since I worked on this I just have like other stuff going on so we're coming back to it um I don't know where I left off I think I was working on the top which I did finish hold on hold on. hold on. so the top is done I tried it on last night and um I loved it I was like I should always be sleeping in silk pajamas <laughs> it was so nice so I finished this, I think I was like on the straps, but I just finished it off camera during our break. And I added a label into it. I wasn't going to, but then I realized I couldn't really tell what the front and the back was. So a label was necessary. I wasn't going to because I didn't know if it would bother me while I'm sleeping because all my pajamas are tagless. But the top is done. The narrow hem needs work, but I'm a work in progress. So I'm okay with that. So now I'm moving on to the shorts. Okay, let's chop up. All right, so for the shorts, I think originally I was going to do, I don't remember what I've told you at all, so I'll have to look at the footage and edit out what I'm going to say. <laughs> but I think originally I was going to do a ruffle short, and then that was too much with the French seams, so we're just doing a plain short, and I'm pretty sure I told you how I'm drafting it. So for the shorts, I did do the front seam inseam, so that's already done. So I just need to do the back inseam and then the side seam. Okay to do list. I need to do the inseam on the back. I need to do the side seams. Uh, put the elastic, it may, like it's a fold over waistband, so just make the waistband, sew it down, and hem it. So I think there's just four things left. And my goal is to actually finish this today. We'll see if that happens, but that's my goal. <laughs> Don't see why it couldn't happen. And one thing that I'll show you when I'm sewing that's really helped with this is because I am doing French seams and the seam allowance is half an inch is with my I have a sewing foot kit it has a quarter inch quilting foot so that's really helped make the French seams go faster but anyway I'm gonna sew up the inseam and then we'll check back in when I'm on side seams so I can show you what I'm doing all right I finished the side seams and I also did the, uh, this is the center, the inseam, but I also did the, oh, right there, the crotch. And so now I'm just folding over a half an inch of the fabric and pressing it using my pressing guide. And then I'm going to fold it over another inch and a half. And then that will be the fold over casing for my elastic. All right, so I have my waistband folded over and then I'm just sewing very closely to the edge. And I'm gonna leave a gap open for my elastic. I need to measure out the elastic, but it's probably just gonna be to my waist measurement. And then as you can see, let me zoom in. I'm just edge stitching it along the way. And yeah, once I put the elastic in, I'm gonna try them on and hopefully they fit well. All right, the elastic is in the shorts and I, I'm kind of in between two thoughts on these. So it, 
like comes to here, which I think is a good drop, but the elastic is not super tight. However, I don't want the elastic to be super tight because these are pajamas. <laughs> so I'm like, should I take it in? Like, like, I think that's probably an inch and a quarter just so it has a little bit of grip on my body so that they don't slide off of me in the middle of the night. I should probably do that. That's what we're going to do. Um, the inseam. The inseam on the crotch. I was worried that the French seams would be annoying. They're not annoying, but I do know, notice them right now. But beyond that, I think the fit's pretty good. I am getting a little bit of a diaper butt because that's where I left the opening. So there's no elastic right there. But I think overall, pretty good. I love the color. It is as rich on camera as it is in real life. So yeah, I'm just going to take about, what did I say, inch and a quarter out of the elastic and install up the back hole. And they just need to be hemmed. And my silk pajamas are done. I have to try not to sleep in them tonight so that they'll be fresh tomorrow <laughs> so I can film my outro. But next time you see me, um, I'll be in the pajamas and I'll tell you my final thoughts. I felt like it was fitting to film this final wrap up in my bedroom since they are pajamas. So final thoughts, I love them. This is this is so soft on my skin. I have been so excited to wear these and sleep in them. Took my final B-roll, took my pics. Now I can sleep in these pajamas. <laughs> They're so soft and silky. They were worth all the work that it took to make them. However, in the future, I will not dissuade myself from buying silk pajamas because it is a lot of work so I get the price. Uh, I don't think there's anything I would have changed in my making process. No, I was pretty happy and satisfied with everything. So that's it. It's a short one, but long overdue. <laughs> so if you like this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Comment down below what you thought. Also this color, like my goodness. Also, I'm wearing a bra, but I did draft these for no bra because we're not that kind of channel, <laughs> just so you know. But yeah, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.